Now we're going to set up, enumerate, and exploit one of the only available intentionally vulnerable Windows Server 2008 VMs, Metasploitable 3. First we're going to need to download and install Vagrant, which is a tool that simplifies the building and managing of virtual machine environments. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to be using that version. Go ahead and download and execute the MSI file to install. Next, accept, next, next, install. Once the download is complete, restart your system. Now open a command prompt with administrative privileges. Now we need to create a vagrant file by typing in vagrant init. This is going to create a vagrant file in your current directory. Now visit this GitHub site to grab the Vagrant file configuration for Metasploitable 3. This URL and all commands, as always, is attached to this lecture. Copy this configuration and paste it into the Vagrant file that you just created in the System32 directory. Go ahead and open Notepad as Administrator. Now go to the Vagrant file that you created in System32. Open. Remove all of the text and paste the text that you copied from the Metasploitable 3 configuration and save. Now back to your administrative command prompt, type in vagrant up. Once vagrant is finished, we'll have an intentionally vulnerable Windows 2008 VM and a vulnerable Ubuntu VM to test on. We should now be able to open VirtualBox Manager and have them already loaded. At this point, I suggest that you restart your computer because I had some VirtualBox errors that were resolved by rebooting. As you can see, we have two new VMs loaded into VirtualBox Manager. We're going to be focusing on the Windows 2008 VM in this lab but I suggest that you also hack the Ubuntu VM on your own. Before starting Metasploitable 3, let's make some configuration changes. Right-click the Windows 2008 VM, click Settings, go to Network, change to Host Only, make sure it's the same one you have for Kali Linux. There's two by default, just make sure they're both host only. Go to display. Now raise the video memory, make it at least 27. Go to remote display. Uncheck enable server. Click OK. Start the VM. Once it's loaded, you should see this screen. Now let's go to Kali Linux. First of all, let's find the IP address. Note that NetDiscover will not work for this particular VM, so we'll have to use an alternative method for host discovery. Nmap is also a great tool for host discovery, so let's use that. 
This command will run a host discovery scan on the host only IP address space. My results show that we have several hosts up here. Remember that there are two NICs configured on Metasploitable 3, so there will be two separate IP addresses. However, they're going to serve the same purpose for our lab. If you're unsure which IP is which, just scan them all until you find the correct one. Now let's enumerate some of the services. nmap-a, IP address, Nmap results show a big attack surface. One thing that sticks out to me is this Apache web server that's running on a non-standard port. Let's go ahead and visit that in a web browser and see what we get. So visit the IP address of Metasploitable and port 8383. We see here that we have a login page for Manage Engine Desktop Central Mine. Let's see if there's any known vulnerabilities pertaining to this service with Searchsploit. So go to a terminal real quick. Just type in Searchsploit Manage Engine Desktop Central Mine. All right, we get a couple of results here. So there are several known vulnerabilities, but the one that sticks out the most to me is the Ruby exploit, which is built into Metasploit. Let's try that first. Type in MSF console. Now set up the exploit, so use exploit forward slash windows, forward slash HTTP, forward slash manage engine underscore connection ID underscore write. If you're wondering how I found this information, just Google the string desktop central metasploit and you'll get this exploit module on the first result. That's how I quickly found the module to use here. Set our host to the IP address of metasploitable3. Remember that there's two IPs configured, so if one doesn't work, try the other one. Set the R port to 8383. Set SSL to true. Set localhost to the IP address of Kali Linux's host only interface. Run to start the exploit. Awesome, as you can see here, we have a meterpreter shell. Let's run a meterpreter command to create a cmd.exe shell. So type in execute, hyphen f, cmd.exe, hyphen i, hyphen h. All right, just run a couple quick commands. Run host name. All right, run who am I? So as you can see here, we're logged in as Metasploitable3 with the privileges of local service. So we still need system level privileges in order to own this box. Let's go back to the interpreter shell by pressing Control and C. Y to terminate the channel. Now, I want to see what kind of services are running locally that may have been missed by Nmap. For this goal, I'll use the netstat command in Meterpreter. So just type in netstat. Go to the top of the results here. I see that Tomcat is running on port 8282. 
Let's go to a web browser and see if we can access it. So IP address of Metasploitable 3 and the port 8282. Okay, looks like we can access it. Let me see this manager application. Okay, so we need some credentials to utilize the manager application. Let's go back to our limited shell and see if there's any insecure Tomcat configurations that will show us the credentials in their default location. Just going to execute another command shell here. All right. So, with knowledge of the default Tomcat configuration location, I'm going to change to directory C, change the program files, Apache Software Foundation. Change to Tomcat. Change to Apache Tomcat, this directory here. Change to the conf directory. Okay, I see a file named tomcatusers.xml. Let's try to print the contents of that file. So type tomcat users.xml. Okay. See a username and password here. Sploit and sploit. Let's go back to the website and see if we can try out these newly acquired credentials. Click Manager App, try the username Sploit and password Sploit. Great, we're in. I see right away that there's file upload capabilities. We should be able to upload a malicious war file to acquire a remote shell. A web application resource, or war file, is commonly used to distribute collections of Java server pages and such, but there's a well-known vulnerability in this version of Tomcat that can be exploited with Metasploit. Let's put that theory to the test. First, we need to generate a malicious payload with MSF Venom, so let's open up a terminal. This command will create a malicious war file which will attempt to connect to our Kali Linux VM. Make sure to change the L host to reflect your host only Kali Linux VM. Once complete, switch back to your web browser. Click Browse. Select your malicious war file. Click Deploy. After successfully deploying your war file, go to a terminal and set up Metasploit's multi-handler. Type in MSF console. Use exploit multi-handler. Set lhost to the IP address of Kali Linux host only IP address. Set l port. I'm going to set it to 4445. 
set payload, same payload that we used when we created the malicious war file. It's a Java JSP shell reverse TCP. Start of the listener, back to the website. Now let's execute the malicious war file. Just click on the location where it was uploaded. As you can see, the exploit was successful. Now we have a remote shell. Let's go ahead and check our privileges. Fantastic. We have system level privileges. This is just one way to go about hacking Metasploitable 3. I advise that you take your time and figure out all methods of exploitation on your own.